Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Marash, and if this is the first time you're stopping by, here's a playlist of all of our LFF episodes. And if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, we're gonna have a new video talking about something different in the world of large format photography. If you're this far into the series, you probably already have a large format camera and maybe you already have like a setup you're really comfortable with, but today I wanna to detail a little bit about transporting your gear. So how are you gonna get all of that stuff that you've got, that large format fluff, from point A to point B? A majority of photographers I know, they got more than one bag. Here, let me give you an example. All right, so let's see, there's the mirrorless bag. Here's the, there's the old Hasselblad bag. You got the film holders bag, you got the carry-on case, you got the backup bag. Let's see, then we got the primary bag and we got the big boy right here. So yeah, we, there's, we, we've got bags. There's so many bags. Admittedly, bags are a portion of the photography market in general that is just super saturated. There's so many options. We've got Think Tank, Low Pro, Tenbo, Wandered, Peak Design, F64, F-Stop Gear, Mindshift, Manfrotto, HPRC, Pelican, SKB, Portabrace, Lightware, Shimoda, Tamrak, and that's not even 20% of the brands that make something that's specifically for like big camera gear, so like a big hiking backpack or shoulder bag. When you're moving your large format gear, you wanna protect three main things. The camera body, the lenses you're using, and your back. Especially if you're hiking around with your camera gear, you wanna make sure your back is intact by the time you get there. As far as protecting the lens, this is probably the easiest thing to do, and I'll show you the option that I've used for years. And it's these little padded wraps. You've probably seen me use these on the show before. This is a padded wrap. It's neoprene on one side, and then it's got little Velcro on the tips, on the corners. And it does great. I just pop my lens down, and I start burritoing it. That's what I call it. Fold the corner in, pop it on top, fold the corner, pop it on top, and ta-da, your lens is a little more padded than it was before. Lens caps hold themselves on, and I can knock this around and still feel pretty comfortable. Now, if I spike this like a football, I'm still gonna ding and bruise and potentially break things, but this can kind of shift around in my bag and it's not gonna hurt anything. And depending on the type of bag you're using, you can also use a larger one of these wraps around the camera. I see that happen a lot when folks are using non-photography branded bags. So in the photo realm, there's tons of bags. It's super, super swamped with different brands that are out there. You don't have to buy a photo specialty bag. In fact, a lot of non-photo specialty bags will be really inexpensive, but they might not have all those extra little padded dividers and little Velcro bits that you can move around. I have a photo specialty type bag, so I don't use a wrap around my camera, but I do use one extra piece on my camera, and that is, this is called my ground glass protector. There's a few folks that uh, still make these new and used um, on eBay. Probably the nicest one I've seen is the one that Keith Canham makes uh, for his cameras, but he also makes them for a variety of other cameras. It's just a piece of heat bent acrylic. I don't think this is a continuous molded piece. I think it's just bent. And one side of it inserts where the film holder does, the other side sits on the outside, and then this is just kind of a handle so I can pull it in and out and insert it onto the back of my camera. This prevents anything from kind of like stabbing into the ground glass. So the point breakage is probably the easiest way to break your ground glass. And this won't protect from a completely broken ground glass, but uh, as I've had happen a few times, if my ground glass does bust, um, this will also prevent the glass from going everywhere else inside my camera and inside my camera bag. So I can kind of like remove the whole spring back and kind of like put my glass off somewhere else. So these are pretty, pretty nice little things to add. You can usually find them for anywhere between 20 and 50 bucks. Just another good little expenditure for your camera. And as for the main camera bag, we have a few options there. We can go with like a shoulder bag, one that slings over the side. I don't tend to like those because once you add all the camera holders, lenses and things, even with a lightweight camera, you're gonna add all this extra stuff and you're gonna kind of have like a divot in your shoulder or you might be changing shoulders back and forth through the course of the day and that's never really fun. We have backpack type bags. Those are probably the most popular for large format because we might carry a lot of things. And if you're traveling, but you're not going too far from the car or you're just going from like studio to a, a other studio location or you're traveling uh, overseas or by plane or something, you also have hard cases. If you're a four x five shooter and you're traveling, Pelican 1510s are a great way to travel. 
There's a lot of non-Pelican branded cases which are great for this kind of stuff. Uh, the 1510 is especially nice because it is exactly carry-on dimensions. This thing is hefty. It's about 10 pounds empty, drop proof. You can have a small fire going on it and uh, there are some little float valves in here too. So you can try and sink this, uh, but it will not sink unless you really, really force it to. So these cases are darn near indestructible. The gear that's in there is still destructible, but very, very well padded. You can buy versions of this that have the pick and pluck foam or padded dividers. I went for the padded dividers option. They have ones that have think tank bags, uh, bags in them now. There's so many different varieties of this. Ooh, that's loud. Type of case, but they're great. I purchased this over a decade ago uh, before I got into large format and I still use it for all sorts of things. Um, this, I'll use this when I'm doing carry-on travel. I'll put my large format lenses and uh, my changing bag, as you saw on the top there, and that really helps me uh, get through airport security with my expensive stuff. For my monorail, I use one that's a little bit bigger, just a little. This guy, the Pelican 1630, this one holds my whole Cenar P2 8x10 kit. This obviously doesn't fit all in the frame, but it's a big boy. Oh, and keep in mind that when I'm showing you these really big bags, it's because I shoot 8x10, so if your back hurts just looking at this stuff, yeah, you probably want to shoot like 4x5 or 5x7, something a little bit smaller. 8x10 is going to tax your resources. For my main backpack, I use a big old Low Pro backpack I, I found used a few years ago. This is the uh, Super Trekker AW2. The AW stands for all weather because it's got weatherized little Gore-Tex seals. And it is, well, as you can see, it's a big boy. It holds all the things I need except the film holder. So I actually do have carry a separate case for that, but it's awesome. So there it is, the Low Pro Super Trekker AW2. The reason it's big though, is it's got a whole lot of gear. So we open up the Gore-Tex zipper and we have stuff. Now we got a dark cloth, we got the camera body here. Most eight x 10 cameras are gonna be about a 14 inch square. 14, 15 inch square. That's usually good for folding field cameras. Got some filters, some lenses, light meter, filter holders. There's all my neoprene wraps, loop, camera body. You can see the bottom compartment is, uh, well, it's pretty much empty now. It's really all about just getting that extra real estate, that space. So there, there's padding on each little corner. And then I also have my ground glass cover, and then the dark cloth sits on top of that just as an extra little piece of protection. So I went with this bag really just because of those overall dimensions. I'm usually carrying anywhere from three to six lenses in here. There are some times where I'll have just one lens and it's awesome. But the other cool thing about having a bag that has an opening the same size as my eight x 10 camera is when my camera is set up on the tripod, I can also put my film holder bag in the exact same compartment. So I can leave the camera on the tripod, put it over my shoulder, and now my holders will sit in the backpack so I can travel about as efficiently as possible for, uh, for an eight x 10 kit. So that's what I really like about it. This top pocket here has all these little zippered areas, adapter ring for my filter holder system. I got a few of those for a few different sizes, extra cable releases, extra sink cords. You can never really have too many of those, but as I take stuff out, you can see it's it's just a bunch of empty space. A lot of times space is the big thing we need. All these cords up here are for cinching a tripod. And at the very bottom of this bag, inside a zipper, is my, my little shower cap. So this protects it from the rain. You might say, Matt, are you actually shooting out in the rain? Well, I'm traveling with my camera in the rain sometimes. Uh, this is for my buddy Mike Rosso. He shot this of me looking like a giant, uh, giant wet sewer rat out in the middle of New York City, uh, hauling around this eight x 10 camera kit for a very rainy photo walk Sunday. It was a fun day in retrospect, but man, that was a lot of rain. A bag is just kind of like your camera, it's just a box, except it's a comfortable box that holds all your stuff. But what makes a bag critical, in my opinion, is not just how it holds your stuff, it's how it prevents you from getting hurt. So on the back of my bag here, 
you can see there's kind of a robust padding system. And this is why I chose a hiking style and photo style camera bag. So again, this is the Low Pro Super Trekker All Weather 2. Bought it used. This is the important part of the system though, the padding. So we have back support from the middle to the lower, my lumbar support, it's all there. I've got these adjustable waist straps and hip straps with a really nice, easy to adjust clasp on there. I have this middle back and this part is actually adjustable. So I can pull this on the Velcro out and extend it. So if I am, well, not short like I am, I can pull this up and I can also adjust the load on my shoulder. So this pushes the bag further off or closer to my shoulder. So I can adjust the weight of my bag and how it's distributed from the lower back to the middle of my back to my shoulders. And even from my shoulders, I have this little chest strap here, which again, just pulls a little bit more of that weight together. So now I can distribute the weight evenly. When you have a bag where you can distribute the weight perfectly even, it sounds weird, but it doesn't feel like you're wearing a whole lot on there. It feels kind of comfortable. And at times I've packed about 70 pounds worth of stuff in these bags and it doesn't feel that bad. The longest I've hiked with a bag like this, I had a day where I was hiking around about 10 miles. And yeah, I was dead tired that day, but one thing didn't happen. I didn't hurt my back. I used to have an older bag, and I will call them out here. It's an F64 bag. They are large format specialty bags, but it's really a lot more boxy. It didn't have an adjustable shoulder strap. It didn't have an adjustable lumbar support, and I couldn't shift uh, the weight around. And what that did, is it almost killed my back. If you are carrying a big old large format, maybe even ultra large format kit, you're also gonna wanna think about how you're gonna get your film holders from A to B. The more holders you have, the more weight you're going to have on you, so you're gonna wanna keep those decently protected. For me, I found a solution that was, I think, 25 cents at a garage sale. I found a used little cooler tote. This is perfect. It's meant to handle a few six packs of beer and keep them nice and cozy. Uh, it's a little neoprene padded zippered case and it holds up to 12 film holders at a time. I've got, I've got a pair of them in there right now in my little Ziploc bags. It does a great job. If you wanna go fancier and you already have a camera bag from your digital or your smaller film kit, I've got an old Tenba Messenger. I'll also put film holders or film boxes in here. This is the one I'll usually do for air travel personal effect. This will go under the seat in front of me and it'll have all of my films, like my sheet films in boxes in there. So big takeaways when you're trying to transport your large format gear. What type of camera are you using? How far are you going with that gear? And how much do you really need to carry with you? So you wanna protect your camera, protect your lenses, protect your holders, and really the big one, protect yourself. If the bags, like your back is still hurting looking at all these options, even the ones that are more comfortable bags, there is no shame in getting a cart type system. So I'm not talking like the little, the little red wagon. I'm talking about like an all-terrain baby jogger, like a nice three-wheel push jogger. Those are actually great for going out into nature. Um, I know an ultra large format photographer, he is, he just, he's in his 80s now. He actually hauls around a 7x17 camera with a baby jogger. So there are solutions, but we might have to be a little bit more creative on those solutions. If you're buying something that's camera branded and you're buying it brand new, you are going to pay the niche tax, right? You're going to pay a little bit more because there's less people buying that same type of bag brand new. My two cents, get a used one. Yeah, sometimes they might have some cat hair or smell like cigarette smoke, but they're gonna do the job and you're gonna have more money freed up for those extra things that you probably wanna have anyway, like more film or another lens or another piece that's gonna make your shooting experience a little bit easier. For me, the bag is kind of a financial afterthought. I've only ever purchased used bags and used cases for my large format gear and it's been great so far. What bag do you use for your large format gear? Is there anything I didn't cover that you think everybody else should know about? Let me know down below in the comments. I'm gonna have links to the gear that uh, I currently use. A lot of it's used, so I'll try and find equivalencies there. Uh, next week I plan on having a Q&A video going up uh, sometime between now and the next Large Format Friday. So if you have any questions, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. And we're getting closer to being able to do a darkroom live stream. I'm really excited about getting that to work. The internet connection is still probably the hardest part, but there should be an announcement for one of those soon too. So thanks for stopping by 
and hope to see you next time for Large Format Friday.